It'll be good for you. You'll get to make friends. Learning is fun. You may not like it now, but you'll realize it was good for you. You need this to be successful. It'll give you the best possible start in life. There's no other option. You have to go. It's illegal not to. Just admit it. It's fun. Admit it. It's good for you. Come on, you like it, right? This is the way it's always been. the story of how the most influential system in our society, the machine that shapes hundreds of millions of people's lives, is fueled by propaganda, stagnation, and profit. This is the story of the extremely flawed system that is education. Every 24 hours in the U.S., 56.4 million students attend school and 3.2 million teachers teach these students. Every individual in this vast body of teachers teaches roughly the same thing in a cycle for years on end. As a result, every year the exact same high school class with the same content, the same questions, the same problems is taught independently more than 62,000 times. This leads to many massive time wastes. For instance, one full year course of school is just 1,080 hours and could be covered by a series of video courses, but every single day, teachers across just the US teach 1,500 years of content. For a sense of scale, 1,500 years ago, the Byzantine Empire was approaching its height. Every year, seven million years worth of work by students is submitted, graded, and then never looked at again. This level of redundancy is simply not needed. School's massive inefficiency problem only gets worse when looking at it with the abilities today's technology provides. Only 13,000 hours of content are needed in order to provide a full education from K through 12, and yet the system uses more than 3.5 million years, nearly 2.4 million times as much effort to accomplish the exact same task. These 3.5 million years could be poured into researching, developing, and filling the most interesting and in-depth 13,000 hours of content possible and distributing it to students not only in the US, but around the world. But instead, they're used to provide rather mediocre education where individual teachers have to try and provide the highest quality education they can to their students while having a very small budget. We no longer have to have one instructor for every 17.65 students, meaning we can and desperately need to increase this ratio to something a lot more, like one instructor per 10,000 students. Teachers in physical schools should have the job of helping individual students with individual problems, not trying to teach the entirety of the content for a field by themselves. Personalization in learning should be provided in person, while the basics are learned through well-made, high-budget videos that the students choose to watch. This would also allow students to choose an instructional style that best fits them, rather than being forced to learn under whatever style their current teacher specializes in. People are taught at a young age because that is the time when they can learn the quickest and when they can be the most easily influenced. So it is essential that the societal machinery that teaches the youth is both leaving them with the skills to learn more and allowing them to learn as much as possible when they are as young as possible. A system built to do this should have as little inefficiency as possible so the students can be as engaged, as interested, and as understanding of the material as they can be. So when looking at the inefficiency that is so obvious in the majority of our current schools, it is clear that we need to change a lot about them. Let's see what the education system has to say about all of this. The UK's Department of Education says that, quote, regular attendance at school gives you the best possible start in life and prepares you for the future, and that, quote, going to school should be interesting. Not only will you learn subjects, but you will also learn new skills, including social skills. I have a few problems with this description. It sounds like what school should be for sure, but in reality falls short of what's actually happening. First of all, school does not give you the best possible start in life. It just gives you the best available, not possible, start to working at traditional jobs with decent pay. Sure, school should be interesting, but how does that explain the fact that two-thirds of high school students feel that school is boring, either because they feel the material is irrelevant or that they don't have enough teacher interaction? School is objectively not interesting. There is no argument that can be made that the majority of students, millions upon millions, are just not doing school right. So the content is not fun, but at least the experience as a whole is, right? Well, 
not so much. 60% of the time during the school day, an average student is feeling worse than they do on average. 75% of students feel that school as a whole is a negative experience. This is for high schoolers. School generally feels more engaging for students in younger grades. The majority of students say that school is stressful, boring, and follows a strict, unchanging routine. Millions of students are supposedly learning what they need to do in the best way possible by doing roughly the same thing every hour, every day, every year for over a decade. A commonly used explanation to wave all this away is a kind of mental balancing act. You met all your friends through school, so even if the work is negative, the overall positives still outweigh that negative. This justification would make more sense if changing the way school ran would also remove all of the potential to form friendships from it, but this clearly is not true. We'll discuss this in more detail later, but we're not quite done with the negatives yet. School is incredibly removed from the outside world. 28 million students, roughly half of all students attending school at any one time in the US, said the material in school feels irrelevant to what they do outside it. Such a large proportion think this because, well, it's completely true. The vast majority of school assignments are never seen by anyone other than your classmates, teacher, and possibly parents. In fact, out of the thousands of assignments I have done over my school time, I can't remember a single one that got fully outside the school's containment field. On top of this, most assignments for math and science that are supposed to be engaging are incredibly mundane. Take for example, real world math problems. I've never done one of these problems that is relatable to the real world past simple multiplication and division. It is extremely unlikely you're gonna have to find the length of a piece of fence using a system of quadratic equations rather than a tape measure. There's also a whole genre of problems that use equations to model real world phenomena that they don't actually accurately model, such as a quadratic equation measuring how long the antlers on a deer are which is doing the exact opposite of trying to relate math to the real world. Some of these problems are so ridiculous, it baffles me how the person who made them thought they were related to the real world at all. Take for instance, a problem I had in eighth grade math involving a child standing on top of a playground, throwing a ball directly downwards, and calculating how long it will take to hit the ground based on its initial velocity and the height of the playground. How is this a real world math problem? Literally no child has ever done this. Science is not much better. The vast majority of experiments are designed not by the students, but by the teacher. Those that are supposed to be invented by students often can only be done in one or two ways with the materials provided, making them not actually really student directed. On top of this, the results of these experiments are often shrouded in mystery until the students get the results themselves, even if those results are painfully obvious from the beginning. An experiment can still be fun and educational if you know what's happening in it and what result you should get. All of school is in a self-contained bubble and the system seems to like pretending that nothing else other than more school exists. You are prepared only for more school by school, at least up until college, never for the rest of your life. In order for school to work well, this has to change. We have to make school truly part of the rest of the world. Just because kids are young doesn't mean they are incapable of doing complex work in society. School, in order to fix the disconnect with the rest of the world, should effectively become a massive research institution. The kids and teachers alike would be taught about issues and methods that could be used to solve them by instruction that dynamically changes based on what is happening in the real world. And they would all try to solve real world problems together, learning about how to do more advanced things in different fields as they go. This would not only make school orders of magnitude more engaging, but would add 7 million years of new work towards the world's biggest problems every single year. The students would feel and actually really be valued. Their work wouldn't just disappear into a void as they submit it. And the education system would be pressured to make education better and better because of the actual good in the world it would directly bring. But there's more than just a disconnect with the real world dehumanizing school. Students are actively discouraged from being creative in the system today. Every single activity, even supposedly creative ones, have requirements 
and due dates. It is extremely rare for a student to be able to or to want to turn in their own custom assignment rather than the one the teacher asked for. And depending on the teacher, there is a risk that that assignment proposal will be shot down, modified, or the student will be marked down for not doing the assignment that was asked for. For example, drawing a comic strip that has to have 10 to 12 panels, 13 vocabulary terms, describe how the legislative system works with other branches of government, and is due at the end of the class period is not in any way a creative assignment. I'm generally fairly creatively driven, and these types of assignments are by far my least favorite. Creativity is doing something you want to and like to do, not something somebody else wants you to do. A replacement assignment for this that would actually encourage creativity is asking the students to come up with their own complete system of government. That's all you need, no due dates, no requirements, just the goal and the expectation that it will be done at some point. But with real creative assignments being extremely rare and clockwork-like due dates and cycles of assignments pressuring students to do the easiest thing possible in order to desperately try to get everything done on time, creativity simply gets crossed off as an option. It is not efficient to use creativity in the system. It is efficient to do what everyone else is doing, to do what you are told and to leave your personality and talents out of the assignments that you are given. Students that don't want to do the given assignments and decide not to are brought down even further. Teachers will pressure them into doing their work, their grades will drop dramatically, and their parents will get angry at them for not doing an assignment they likely haven't even seen themselves. These kids are perfectly capable of finding what they need to do or asking someone else, and many of them already know what they should be doing. They just simply don't care enough about the assignments to do them at that exact moment without being forced to. The fact that the system needs to humiliate and degrade students into doing work means that that work is very, very clearly uninteresting. And worryingly, to me, this trend of teachers bringing down students was the most apparent in the youngest grades. Kids should not be brought down into conformity as soon as they can be. They should be able to develop into their own person. That is the most depressing, esteem-reducing, dehumanizing part of school. You are forced to do what other people want you to do, what will be most easy for them to evaluate, and what can most effectively make numbers of progress appear. And it's not getting better. For more than a decade, school test results have remained stagnant. SAT scores have been trending downward for the past 10 years, and the scores of the NAEP, or the National Assessment of Educational Progress, have been almost the exact same for every year since the late 2000s. Only 36% of students actually meet expectations for the NAEP, and this has remained the same for years. There is just simply nothing improving. The companies that run the test seem perfectly fine with the material and expectations staying exactly the same, and the preparation for those tests stays stagnant right along with them. I can see from an inside perspective that school is not changing as well. The same types of assignments have always been given, no matter what grade level I'm in. There's never anything exciting and new that happens, never any changes to how assignments work. Feedback is asked for and never seen go into effect. It's like being in a stasis bubble. Schools had a chance to radically change the way that people learned with the introduction of technology like laptops and iPads into the classroom, but this change never happened. The only difference they caused were worksheets being online instead of in paper, and the option of digital projects being made instead of physical ones. There is so much more untapped potential that is just being ignored by the education system. The potential to make things literally millions of times more efficient in less than a year using videos and other interactive online content. But this change is simply not happening, and the way things are going now, it seems like things will just stay the same way forever. Progression in the way school is run is non-existent. So why aren't things changing? Every time you see a picture of school, you see students smiling, happily doing science and art, the teacher helping someone out, or a field trip. Back to school ads are super happy, everything is filled with bright colors and little clip art pictures with text put over them. This is just simply not how school really is. It's a facade put on a gruesome, inefficient, uninspiring system that the majority of students dislike. All of this cherry media, intentionally or not, is making parents think that everything is fine, that their child is just being silly. School isn't bad at all. <clears throat>
Unless you are much occupied with various tasks, staying without work during the day can be really boring and tiresome. Isn't it better to attend school rather than sitting idle the entire day? Not only will it keep you active, it will also help you learn other useful skills as well. Though you might enjoy staying unoccupied for the first few days or a month, after some time it will get damn boring and kill you. Thus attend school to be a happy, successful person. Gone are the days when school meant just learning the events given in a history chapter, or solving tough mathematical problems, or reciting poems and sonnets. Nowadays, school has become the first stepping stone in the life of a child, wherein he or she learns a lot more than just rote learning. Developing hobbies, refining them, learning basic etiquettes, getting skilled at multitasking, developing social skills, are some of the many things that school equips a child with. Attending school gives you a chance to meet new children of your age. While some only remain classmates, some get close only to become good friends for many years or even a lifetime. Conversely, if you stay home all day long, you will probably not be able to meet many such people of your age. Meeting new people and socializing also broadens your parameters of knowledge. Thus, if you want to lead a good social life, it is best you attend school, else you might up only leading a lonely life. The blatant propaganda I just read out to you is actually a real article and it has so many just straight up lies, it's astounding. Here are the majority of them. You have to be occupied with tasks at school to remain interested. Almost all kids have hobbies they enjoy at home, and even then the majority of kids find school unpleasant and boring. Kids, especially in the modern day, can find things to occupy them that they'll enjoy more than worksheets. School isn't about memorization, reading poems and sonnets, and doing difficult math anymore. Well, it basically is. While these specifics might not be the most common, all classes in school still require memorization. You do in fact have to recite poems and sonnets, and math class is basically unchanged from any other time in history. School most definitely still focuses on these things heavily. It's not some magical paradise where your child learns social etiquette all day. If you stay home all day long, you will probably not be able to meet people of your own age and become lonely. This is true if you stay home and do absolutely nothing, but if you homeschool or unschool and also meet other people doing the same thing, there are most definitely ways to meet other people. I homeschooled for a few years and met some of my best friends during the time. This whole article also uses scare tactics to make school look more appealing. If you don't go, you'll be bored, you'll have no friends, and be lonely. School teaches you everything you need for a happy life. This way of thinking is one of the main things that is preventing things from changing for once. It's trying to convince you that the way things are is better than before, is the best thing for you, and is completely necessary. When in reality things are not getting better, school is a negative experience for most people, and it needs to change as quickly as possible. This propaganda is so prevalent that it makes students feel like they have no choice in how they learn. During school, they tirelessly toil on boring assignments that suppress their creativity. When they walk home in the sun after the day is over, they start to relax and think, maybe it wasn't all that bad. Maybe I need this. Let me assure you, it is all that bad, which brings us to our next point. When I think back on previous years of school, they don't seem all that bad, not even close to the grinding clockwork of constant work that presents itself to me now. This is because in our minds we perceive things in one of two main ways, short long and long short. Short long happens when you experience a lot of activity in a short space of time, when your brain is stimulated and interested in the world around you. In the moment, you perceive this time as flying by, but it feels like a more substantial portion of life afterwards. Long short is the opposite. When you aren't very mentally stimulated, you feel in the moment that time passes very slowly, but afterwards your brain packs that memory into a small period of remembered time and stores it away. Needless to say, school is mostly long short. This leads to an interesting perception of school as you age. While you're in it, time feels to be passing incredibly slowly, but as soon as you leave the building, those experiences are shortened in your memory. The less you remember school, the more boring it might have been. So it's no surprise that many adults think that most students enjoy school, or that it wasn't that bad, or that it'll fly by for the kids in it. Their memories of their own schooling have been refined to the good parts. 
where they were interested, stimulated, hung out with friends, and learned interesting things, even though when they first experienced it, these happy moments felt few and far between. While it might be hard at first, we need to get past what we remember and down to what is actually happening. The presence of the masses of students that feel worse because of school is clear. It is ingrained in the jokes and culture of every successive young generation. There is no reason, no justification, why education needs to be like this. So how do we fix the system? First, we need to bring down the notion that school is good enough. It is not, and it will be extremely hard to get it to that point. School is the most influential mechanism in shaping our society, and in order for it to be considered successful, every student should feel every day that they enjoy learning, that they are useful, and that they are helping. Kids need to be doing the things they want to do in order for them to feel truly accomplished. They need to be able to be creative, to choose what they want to learn, and to make a significant impact on the world. If not above 99% of students enjoy school, we are doing it wrong. Children need to be taught how to learn rather than how to do what others force them to. They need to learn how to change the world rather than settle into a mediocre job for the rest of their lives. The first step to making this happen is replacing normal instruction by teachers with high quality, well-researched, student-reviewed, interesting and information dense videos. A vital thing for these videos is research into exactly what makes the content the most interesting, the most memorable, and the most enjoyable. A teacher talking into a camera without any edits for an hour straight does not make the cut at all. These videos should be produced by large teams of experts in each field that school will help teach students about and should be reviewed and voted on by tens of thousands of students and adults in the field and should be directed by qualified directors and artists. This would be a massive undertaking, but it would quickly pay off its time investment. Then, instead of teaching the students the material directly, teachers should be solely devoted to helping individual students. The high quality videos would be providing the base content, while personalization is facilitated by instructors. Screening for hiring these teachers must also be more strict, as they have to be able to positively help all of the students they talk to. Teachers must not be viewed as superiors, but rather as peers that have the knowledge to help. Kids should play a useful role in society throughout school instead of being contained in an isolation level with all of their work just being purely for school. And I'm sure the scientific community wouldn't be opposed to gaining 56.4 million new members. If school was a research organization as well as a means for learning, it could also produce value rather than just consume it. When you think about it, it seems strange that we are paying tens of thousands for our children to do work while this work doesn't benefit us in any way. However, if students decided to invent products, do real research, or write novels using the tools their school provided them to show their learning, they would actually be producing real value in the world, enough that they could even get paid for their efforts. And in fact, this can already happen. We're all naturally motivated to learn, at least to some extent, especially when we are younger. We search for things that we're interested in and become good at them. These are our hobbies. School drives this natural motivation out of the way, replaces it with an incredibly unnatural form of learning. You never actually really get to figure out how to do something. You're always told or forced to memorize how. This makes children grow a dependence on being told how to do things and crushes motivation for hobbies. You come back from school at the end of the day and feel exhausted, ready to just do nothing for the rest of the day. This is a sign things are going wrong. You should feel excited after school, wanting to do more research, complete your project you've been working on, staying at school after hours to figure more things out. Your hobbies and learning should be the same thing. This type of free learning where you are naturally curious does happen though. Almost every hobby people have, from gaming to writing novels to drawing cartoons, is driven by internal motivation, by self-learning. It would be a pretty safe bet that most people don't find worksheets on their hobby and complete them in order to learn, or unwillingly sign themselves up for mandatory lessons they always have to go to. Instead, they research by themselves, watch tutorials, experiment with things, and actually figure things out. And people who are good at this become really, really good at their hobbies. 
This is a natural way to learn because everyone likes learning. You're not gonna find someone that doesn't have an interest that they're knowledgeable about. I've learned the vast majority of things I actually care about by myself. I've learned how to write stories as creative writing techniques were never really taught in school, learned how to make music, learned how to edit videos, learned how to 3D model, code, build, and automate. Everything I feel proud of doing well, I learned myself. This type of learning is so much more powerful and so much more rewarding than the standard repetition and discipline that is normally taught. Everyone is capable of it, and everyone has done it before, even if just on a small scale. School has to harness the power of people being intrinsically motivated to learn by giving them the freedom to learn, the tools to do the learning, and by showing them new fields they might be interested in, all while surrounding them with other interesting classmates and friends. If learning at any point seems depressing, boring, toxic, or harmful like it does to so many millions of students, then it is being done wrong. Extremely wrong. I believe I've seen some of the worst school can offer. I've seen a substitute teacher rip a disabled kid's drawing of a tree during elementary school art class to shred, saying trees aren't pink and throw it in the garbage can. In my middle school, the people that were deemed in need of help with learning were given one of the most terrible, toxic teachers I've ever seen who treated them like garbage, like they were two years old, acted extremely condescending, and every student I talked to in his class, nice people thrown under the bus by the system, hated him. I've seen kids throw desks across the room in protest, one literally being carried away when they tried to stand up to the teacher. Especially in younger grades, teachers have yelled frequently at the students. It's not okay to condition young children with the most curiosity to think this is what learning is about. Even some of the good teachers I've had had immense biases for students in higher level classes. They just wanted to get through the class material without a kid goofing off. This is understandable, but I believe the reason these kids act up is because it's their only way of standing up and protesting against the system. It's their defense mechanism for being forced to do repetitive tasks since before they could even really remember. I have been homeschooled twice because of two separate occasions. First of all, in second grade because my teacher was negative and toxic towards the kids. I don't remember many of the specifics because it was so long ago. I only homeschooled for the second half of the year and continued doing GT and art which both had great teachers. I returned back in third grade and it was fine for a while until a new system was introduced where the students would switch classes and teachers for different levels of math classes, most likely to try getting kids used to doing so in middle school. The advanced math teacher is the one I ended up getting, and she was the epitome of a strict, condescending teacher that is all I hate about the school system. She and many other teachers in my elementary school did this thing where she said the first part of a phrase, and you had to say the second part. You also had to drop everything you were doing, which isn't the most convenient thing when you're trying to finish your thought. I, the first day, didn't know the severity of this rule. I was immediately singled out. The teacher straight up saying that everyone had got the call response thing down, except for me. Confused and very startled because she had only called for attention about three seconds ago, I stopped doing the work she assigned and turned around saying, I was just finishing up this question. She quickly replied, no excuses, pay attention. I attempted to argue my case further, but was immediately cut off by a lengthy Shh. The next day, I was scared of being singled out again and was only thinking about that, but I ended up getting settled in, talking to people, and working on the assignment for that day. But I was clearly feeling a little off because I did terribly on that assignment. I messed up a lot. At some point later in the class, I realized then how poorly I had done. I don't remember all the specifics, but at some point the teacher came over and saw me frantically trying to fix my problems after time for the assignment had run out. She shoved the answer seat in my face, sighed, and said, just copy them. My homeroom teacher confronted me sometime soon after. I heard you were having trouble in being disobedient in your math class. I ignored the second part of the question. Yeah, I did bad on that one assignment. I don't know why, but it happened. Then she replied, make sure it doesn't happen again. Well, things got a lot worse. The teacher had a sign, no excuses, big white bold letters on a red background. I tried to switch math classes, but now my homeroom teacher was getting worse and worse too, singling me out frequently, even though that had never happened to me earlier in the year or in any other year. Everything was spiraling out of control. I couldn't go near the building without wanting to 
run away. In just a few weeks, I had gone from being a child to a problem in their view. I still remember the last thing the teacher said to me on that first day of math class. See, it wasn't that bad, was it? I homeschooled for the next two years. This homeschooling helped show me how things could be different. I wasn't the best homeschooled child, but that's probably because the only tools we could find for learning were worksheets and books. I didn't do much curriculum, I begrudgingly took part in some Khan Academy math, and didn't do much else in line with traditional education. But I was very interested in space and science. I watched dozens, maybe even hundreds of documentaries, read books, and was able to remember all of this knowledge without needing to memorize it, without needing to do worksheets, without needing to do anything school would make me do. I wrote an entire little book series, learned how to program in Khan Academy, made music, and drew pictures. And while doing all of this without needing to do a single worksheet, I built up a buffer of knowledge that I still have with me today. I had reached a ninth grade level in reading by third grade. I also met some of my best friends, one of which who was already homeschooling and was friends with the other during this time. Even though I was hard pressed to go to any social event with other homeschooled children, I still made permanent friendships here. This is why the current system of school is not better for friends than any other system. In fact, a system where you helped and were helped by other students, where everyone was interested and told each other about their learning, would help people form friendships so much easier than in one where you have to be silent and work most of the time. I went back to school in fifth grade. I didn't really learn anything in that year, but it was nice getting to talk to older friends again. But it was the things I did in between the parts where I actually had to work and do homework that are the things I'm actually proud of. I learned how to open the diagnostic system on the school's Chromebooks, and we had a good laugh when we found out that their memory health was apparently at 2%. I wrote a short sci-fi story which was actually for an assignment, one of the few that really involved creativity. No sky. My friend and I figured out how to change the background behind the Google Docs webpage and made a different pictures using the Google Inspect menu. In sixth grade, I joined orchestra, a class with no worksheets, not much memorization, and music, something I was already passionate about. At first, I didn't want to join any music class, partly because of how little actual music was in my elementary school music class, but it was mandatory to join a music class in my middle school, which was a good thing for me, but maybe not so much for others who didn't like playing music. There should have been an option to easily demo a class without making a full year commitment. Throughout middle school, orchestra is the only class I consistently enjoyed, but there were some other highlights, sometimes rare classes that were going in the right direction, but mostly things I did in my free time. There was a whole mini unit directed to making paper airplanes, which is the exact kind of thing we need more of. Every single student in this class enjoyed us, and it taught us to be better problem solvers and even learn a bit about aerodynamics. The teacher mostly helped out individual students. It was the exact type of class everything else should be. There was also a class where you could either choose to read a book and answer questions about it, or write your own book. This class wasn't inherently good, for kids who didn't like writing or reading as much and were thrown into it, it was probably pretty bad. But for me, it was basically a free period. I like writing stories. I rewrote my nose guy story from fifth grade to be almost 10 times longer, half during this class and half at home, because I enjoyed it. By the end of middle school, I had figured out how to do all of my work very efficiently, leaving dozens of hours of free time. I found out how to use the Shortcuts app on the school iPads, a visual coding thing built into them. I made automation to do math problems for me, to automatically cite sources for English, teamed up with my friend to make an entire virtual assistant with dozens of built-in games, helping tools, and hundreds of scripted responses and adaptive replies. Out of all of these things, all the parts of school that were fun, the vast majority of them were not taught in a class. These things are a small glimpse of what every day in class should feel like, liberating, exciting, like a big achievement. The reason why I had all of this time to do things during school was because of yet more inefficiency. During online school, I realized how inefficient school is, not even considering the millions of years of wasted time and work I mentioned earlier. Half of what makes up a normal class could be cut out, leaving the teacher with more time to help students individually. Throughout the end of 8th grade, when online school started, we were given the opportunity to stay completely asynchronous. 
an option that I gladly accepted. Instead of doing 35 hours of school a week, I generally got everything done in five. I was able to do this because a normal class in school looks a little bit like this. The teacher introduces the subject, reading word by word of a slideshow they created digitally and is available to all the students. The teacher explains the assignment we have for the day. The assignment also has the exact same instructions, almost always in more detail attached directly to it. The teacher may explain how the assignment is graded. The assignment has a rubric explaining exact grading point breakdown already attached to it. There is work time to work on the assignment after certain parts are explained again after students ask what is going on, even though they could just read the online instruction. At the end of 8th and the whole time during online, I skipped all of these things, immediately reading the instructions and doing all assignments either while the teacher was talking or in another class when I had extra time. These assignments have an astounding amount of wasted time used to explain them. It's not like the explanation is needed. It's provided online for every student already. Teachers should be using all of this time, often upwards of 30 minutes or one third of the whole class period in my school to help individual students while those who know what they're supposed to be doing can go ahead and do it. An ideal school system would not have any whole class instruction. Instead, it'd provide tons of resources and high quality videos to students to help solve actual problems in the real world. Students would also be able to work on any subject at any time. Having specific times for specific classes leads to students feeling tired of a certain project but still being forced to do it. Students could also choose to relax and take a break at any point. Their participation in school would be out of internal interest, after all so they would want to come back and learn more. School should encourage students that they have the ability to solve problems and do things that adults have never done before, because it's true. Everyone should be treated like humans, explained things in the way you'd explain things to everyone else. Students are just kids, and kids are people too. Another one of the main problems I have with school is how it simply doesn't do this. Throughout the grades, there arises an increasing air of formality around school. Assignments are explained using buzzwords and vague vocabulary that make it harder to understand what assignments are even asking you to do. A question like, how does the author, through the dialogue of the main character, develop tension in the storyline, just seems, well, too distant. It seems like you're talking to a corporation, not a human being. Wording every question and talking to every student in a formal way is just not fun. And for school to work, learning has to be fun. It's almost like there's a stigma against making learning have a lively atmosphere, when in reality, that should be what learning is always about. Why not instead word that same question simply as, what does Jimmy say that makes the book more interesting? Or even throw out the original question altogether and instead just ask the kid what made the book interesting and let them figure out important narrative elements by themselves. School is also filled with hundreds of formal regulations. Classes are a set length of time long. Students always have to be supervised. You have to start and stop learning at the beginning and end of the day. You have to go every day. Every class has to have a certain curriculum. Every student has to take standardized tests. All of these things hinder learning. You should be able to decide to move between classes and look at any materials at any time. Go to school later and leave later as well. Do a lot in one day, then take a rest day to do something else interesting. Decide what you want to learn by yourself. All the strict framework does is tire, stress, and bore students. The only thing school needs to do to supervise learning is teach students why certain fields are interesting and provide students with resources to experiment and learn. Regulations and all of this formality are just a system to give numerical values to learning, something that shouldn't be that easily quantified. Students need to be taught how to learn, not taught how to do tests. Oh, and speaking of tests, the College Board, the supposedly non-profit company that runs SATs and all AP classes and many other programs, earns a profit of tens of millions each year. While this amount of profit varies quite vastly, in 2017 the company made $140 million, in 2018 it was not much better at $94 million. Because this profit is very volatile, it is quite possible the company has made upwards of $160 million in profit in either 2019 or 2020, both years that income has not been reported for yet. 
the college board also earns more and more revenue every year and probably doesn't spend it in a very efficient way based on the upwards of one billion dollars a year it rakes in. The company also has an additional massive one billion dollar reserve of investments it could use to cover some of its costs but it doesn't and instead keeps increasing test fees even while more and more students are taking SATs and AP exams. If these tests were done online or foregone entirely as they don't relate to the real world much other than the old system of only hiring people with high test scores, literally billions of dollars could be saved. But obviously the college board doesn't want to do this as then it would have to take down exam fees, lowering its massive profit and in turn the job security of its workers. Pearson is one of the more common brands to see around school. It produces a lot of the online school infrastructure, which is normally quite bland and uninteresting, as well as makes inspirational educational books and other media that reinforces the current system of school. After all, they make money on it. Pearson has a market cap of more than $8 billion. The educational industry as a whole is worth $77 billion in the US alone, a number which doesn't include teacher earnings, which totals more than $223 billion a year. This whole massive industry is dependent on things staying exactly the same on students being taught in the same way every year forevermore. This system resists change, and if we can't break out of it somehow, then education will remain stagnant and unchanging forever. School is no longer about teaching students that are interested and curious about how the world works around them. It is about earning massive amounts of money under the guise of education. Kids learn faster and are inherently more creative than adults. This comes from the biological need to learn quickly in order to survive in the wild, leading to a rapidly developing brain early on. So it is extremely important we give kids the best possible education they can get, one that harnesses this creativity rather than one that crushes it. But this ability to learn faster also means that kids are never too young to make a change in society. They will in fact be quicker at coming up with innovative ideas, ideas that will come from more unbiased perspectives. The fact that adults are the only people who can actually easily change the world is extremely illogical. Kids can be just as smart as adults in fields with less experience in them, and school could be a tool to provide kids with that experience. Kids are told that they are not old enough, they will learn as they get older, that it would be silly for them to take an active part in society because they would mess it up. This is not true. Kids are a huge, huge source of untapped potential in coming up with ideas, making new products, and changing the world in a big way. They just need to be heard. Adults are not superior just because they are older. There is hope for this situation, the rare interesting fun classes, the friends made at school, the moments where you feel like you accomplished something. These are about the tip of an iceberg of massive possibility. YouTube also gives me hope, the thousands of educational channels who people willingly watch just because they want to learn. Khan Academy, even while having a somewhat traditional educational style, has less than the budget of a single school district but it's used yearly by more than 100 million people, twice as much as the entire US's school system. While these people don't use Khan Academy full time, it still stands as a testament to how much can be done with efficiency. Homeschooling and unschooling are also a light in the dark. More than 4 million students homeschool and on average do better on standardized tests, finish college 67% of the time as compared to the regular 59%, and are successfully able to educate themselves well even while not having the best resources and framework to do so. There's also a movement of Sudbury schools, schools that value democracy, self-learning, and treat students and teachers as equals. These schools are almost exactly what I'm talking about as the ideal form of school. This type of self-driven learning is already shown to be better. It connects to the real world and it is what education should all be, especially with the introduction of today's technology. Our education system is corrupted by propaganda, driven by profit, and stagnated to the point where no progress is being made. It throws out millions of years of effort while producing results consistently below what is expected. It crushes creativity, makes children depend on being told what to do, and wastes the most crucial time of development in all of our lives. It demoralizes, depresses, and demotivates its students and takes away an entire generation from helping our society is proven to be worse than self-education and forces itself to stay on top and suppress how we should learn. This cannot be accepted. We have to show the people and companies that run the system that is no longer effective. 
we have to fix society's most broken machine. I wrote the script for this documentary back when I was in school. I shortly after decided to start homeschooling again in order to pursue things I like, like making these documentaries. This documentary I worked on almost completely, other than the script, while I was homeschooled. So I hope this stands as a testament to how homeschooling is a good thing that can be used to accomplish interesting and useful things in society. Also, I wanted to say that if you enjoy this documentary and want to see me make more, I want to make plenty of documentaries on space and science, other basically big picture interesting topics. So if you want to support more of that, I have a Patreon that I will be linking down in the description of this video. If you support me on the Patreon, you will get the full unedited soundtrack of this documentary, as well as a more 4K than YouTube provides without compression download link to the documentary. Thank you so much for watching. This was a big project and I hope to do more like it soon. I've been to L&L.